Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous, everyone. It's Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and today it is the 30th of April, 2020. The PU has been updated to version 3.9, leaving it in the hands of everybody. I spent about an hour and a half to two hours on two different days last week doing some play in the PTU, and really, I... I I can't say I wasn't impressed. I think the game is moving along well. But there still are some persistent bugs and some problems that I see that have been driving me absolutely insane. Today, all I can say is that when you walk into the game, you can see how much progress has been made over each patch that we have had prior. But you still have certain bugs that can leave you scratching your head saying, well, how do I spend my time in this game at this point trying to make it the game I want to play consistently? And I just have to say this. I'm going to come out with it. There's no way for you to do that because the game is not done. Now, I, I know that's not a shock, and I know that's not going to make anyone go, Oh my god, Nikki's turning on Star Citizen, because that's not what's happening here. What's happening here is each time a patch comes out, I go and I play it for a while, and I try to play it without those rose-colored glasses, without the um, Kool-Aid that I've drank for the last six years. Seven years almost. Oh my god. And all I have to say is, Star Citizen is a world from where we started, but so are a lot of other games. But this one is much more complex than anything that we've ever played before. And we're not seeing what the actual end game is going to be yet. But still... It, it pains me when I have to sit here and look at things that have been consistently wrong with the game since the beginning. The HUDs, some movement issues, physics issues. There are so many mission issues that it hurts. It, it hurts when I bring somebody new into the game. And yet, when you first get go in the game each time there's a new patch, you can't help but go gaga over some of the new features. I know what's going on. CIG is still building their set. We don't even have one star system yet, and Crusader has been pushed back at least until 4.2. Crusader being the last planetary system being updated and created inside of the Stanton star system. We already have Crusader, we already have Port Alisar, Yella, Selen, and we have Daymar. But each and every one of those are going to get a major update at some time in the future, with landing zones actually being in the atmosphere of Crusader. That's still a far way off. Until this point, most of the patches featured 90% location and, I would say, starship creation, and maybe 10 or 15% gameplay. Oh yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? Because that would be 105%. That's what I'm trying to say. There's a lot of things that don't make sense at this point. The last few patches and the next two patches are focusing on gameplay, focusing on quality of life, focusing on making things easier for us to do. But in this patch, we had little elements where they said there were HUD improvements, which I still don't see. I still see HUDs that are hard to read in certain lighting, like this one. I still see HUDs that overpower my view out of the cockpit in different lighting situations, like the 300 series, which have a glow to their HUD which would never happen in real life, that makes it almost impossible to see out the window. Well, it is impossible to see out the window unless you change your gamma. I have so many issues with this patch. Really, folks. And it's not that the patch brought anything bad with it. There 
are some people that are oogling all over the prowler. And there are some people oogling all over prison gameplay. But each and every new thing that they bring out brings new bugs with it. And I know it sounds like I'm being hard on the game. I know it. But in reality, what I, I'm trying to bring to your attention is that I can't look at somebody new who says, Hey, Star Citizen, that looks cool. Should I play it? I would say no, but you can go in and test it. And you can go in and experience it while it's still in development. And I have to say that experiencing the development cycle has been pretty awesome. Seeing each and every one of the new things being put into the game has been pretty, pretty good. But is it really going to be a decade of development before we have a playable game? And here's what I think about playable. Playable isn't what we have right now. What we have right now is testable. We're testing the cargo system. We're testing the bounty system. We're testing the prison system, which is a whole nother video that I don't even know if I'm going to do at this point. We're testing weather effects. But there's still missing elements. And I know when people say, yes, there's mission givers in this game. But there's no storyline to those missions. You get them by doing certain jobs, you get them by bumping into certain people, you get them by just walking up to people, and it's like an MMO from 10, 12, 15 years ago that didn't really have a storyline in it. And that's not a Chris Roberts game. Chris Roberts games aren't about this open world sandbox that doesn't have an underlying story in it. They are about an open universe, open universe, not open world anymore, game that's a sandbox that has an underlying storyline or many underlying storylines. And those elements haven't been added to the game yet. Living, breathing, dynamic, realistic, emerging, you know, emergence. That's not here yet. That's to me when the game is done. Now, I'm going to say this. I don't want you to jump down my throat for anything. I've been playing Assassin's Creed lately, and I got up to um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. In that game, they created the whole of ancient Greece. And you go from Athens to Sparta to Crete to Cyprus. Well, you, you, you go all over the Greek world. And every city in every island, in every kingdom, I guess they were city-states, Sparta and Athens, you find that people are going about their business. They're working, they're going home to sleep, they're, they're filling the streets, they're having conversations. And it builds a believable world for you to exist in. Star Citizen has that as one of its goals. But right now, the NPCs, which are supposed to outnumber us, the player characters, by 10 to 1, can frequently be seen standing in lines, not having conversations, not having anything to say when you walk up to them, standing in T-pose for no reason, sometimes walking in circles, standing on ledges, standing on benches, and that part of the game isn't done. What do I want? That's the question I ask every time I go in the game. Now, I could go in the game and play for three hours and come out and absolutely love it. I could go in the game for 30 minutes and come out and be absolutely frustrated, and that's what happened yesterday. I had an issue yesterday where all I was trying to do is run a box. I ran one from Microtech, which I have to say this, CIG. Microtech is awesome has a lot of lighting issues, but it's awesome. I love it. The weather tech, awesome. I love it. So I, I ran from Microtech to EDA in the Hurston system. I got to EDA. I delivered the package. I went to go pick up another package on EDA to bring back to Microtech, and there was no package when I got to the place, to the exact 
bin that I was supposed to take it out of, it would not give me that package. So I cleared that. I then went to a different place on Hurston, landed, got out, walked up to the building, went through the airlock, went up to the bin to try to get that box. That didn't work. Finally, I went to HR L1 and picked up a package there, or HUL1, whatever it is. I, I received the package, got all the way back to Microtech, and its instructions were to deliver the package to a pad bin, right? So I went up to the bin, clicked on the arrow, and nothing. And then when I look around, the the marker on my HUD is pointing to something 5K away that for an hour that I tried to walk through Microtech, walk through New Babbage, I couldn't get to. I even went to a garage, took out my Ursa, drove, a very hazardous drive by the way, drove all the way to where I thought it was and the marker was in a building about two-thirds of the way up the skyscraper that you couldn't enter. I'm not trying to point out all the negatives. There's many positives. There's many, many, many more positives than negatives. But when the few negatives destroy your gameplay, all you can say is, there's a lot of negative. I, I am impressed with the game. Somewhat frustrated, somewhat disappointed at times, but when I get inside of it and start playing, I just absolutely love it. The things that I want to see fixed in the very near term are the HUDs. The HUDs have to be corrected. I don't know what they're thinking. There's a reason why all HUDs on all aircraft are very similar. They're playing with all these different colors to make them look different when you go from plane to plane. But when you sit in an F-16, an F-18, an F-15, an F-22, an F-35, you know, the HUDs are all very similar in the color that they are and in how they appear because that's what works. That color stands out amongst all other colors. The HUDs don't glow. The HUDs don't have erroneous information. They don't have tons and tons and tons of lines on them for every five degrees that you point the nose. And the reason for that is the HUD is supposed to add situational awareness. It's supposed to create situational awareness for the pilot. So they don't have to look at instruments in a fight, in landing, in takeoff, or when trying to refuel. It delivers them pertinent information so they could stare out the cockpit and not have to focus on it so the HUD is focused at infinity. The HUD is something that is there to aid the pilot. And the HUD in our game does nothing more than distract you and make some things impossible. CIG, stop trying to make things pretty and start making them usable. And I'm talking about in the UI. Lighting is really cool, but every single light seems to have a bloom. In real life, that's not the case. Stop blooming all lighting in the game. I understand why you do it, because you want to have a pretty amazing looking world. But in reality, that's not what it is. And in many cases where you're doing it, like in front of windows in Microtech, where you can see that beautiful scenery that the artist spent so much time working on, you could actually have a viewable scene out of a window at night so you could see that beautiful nighttime skyline just like you could in real life. But the lighting is just wrong. My states of the game are not going to talk about every element of the game. They're just going to talk about what's on my mind. Sometime in the future, I'm going to talk about things that I find very positive. But because I haven't been able to do videos lately, because 
I've been playing kind of clandestined and getting frustrated from time to time, this one might have a negative tone. It does not mean I don't support CIG and the development of Star Citizen. It's contrary to that. I do support them with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, because they're not just the company making my favorite game. Many of them are very good friends of mine. But I'm not going to turn my head away from things that just aren't working. The game is going to continue development, it's going to get better over time, and hopefully by us telling people that there is indeed some issues that we have with the game, they start to listen and start to make the game better. Yes, I was the one that made the mistake here by clicking the wrong button when I walked up to it. But this is not one of the situations I was talking about that I had. This was the box that I delivered. Folks, I don't want to go too deep into the negative. I think I'm going to start pulling out some of the positives, do another video. But this is where we're at today. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, please click the thumbs up button. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. Don't forget to click on that notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.